हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट रीसेंट एडवांसेस इन मेलिस्कस रिपेयर तो मेलिस्कस रिपेयर एज अ साइंस एंड आर्ट इज एडवांस्ड अ लॉट सिंस इट वाज स्टार्टेड एंड वी विल बी कमिंग ऑन टू व्हाट वी कैन डू टू रिपेयर द मेलिस्कस सो वी डू द मेलिस्कस रिपेयर टू रिस्टोर द फंक्शन मिनिमाइज द लोड ट्रांसमिशन मिनिमाइज कॉन्टेक्ट स्ट्रेस कंट्रीब्यूट टू स्टेबिलिटी एंड कंट्रोल प्रोटेक्शन सो व्हाट इज इंपॉर्टेंट इज सो इफ यू सी हियर दिस इज योर मेलिस्कस एंड दिस मेलिस्कस has a predominantly load bearing function so it's it's not a it's not a it's not a it's not a uh, structure which can be just trimmed off or removed it has a function it it, it acts like a shock absorber and it prevents all sorts of a degeneration or arthritis <coughs> in the knee so that is the purpose of doing a meniscus repair now you must have read about the types of meniscus repair in your books so outside in inside out and all inside these are the three Standard uh, meniscus repair technique that I taught. Now we had added another new uh, device or technique which is called as a menisco tibial repair. So this is very important to understand because many of the things that I am going to show will be based on this uh, innovation of menisco tibial repair. So normally what happens is if you have a meniscus tear, uh, you can come from outside in and then you tie a knot here. This is called as a outside in repair or you can go from inside and out and you can tie not outside that is called as inside out repair or you can use some devices which you can which can hold like this and can repair it like this so uh, historically anterior horn you do a outside in repair body you do a ins uh, all inside repair and posterior uh, sorry Uh, posterior horn you do a all inside repair and body you do a inside out repair so this was the historical thing but in uh, with the recent advances if they are all interchangeable so you can use outside in for posterior horn you can use inside out for anterior horn and you can use all inside for anterior horn and i'll be coming to how can you do that so if you want to do an outside in technique with uh, not the classical outside in you can use a meniscus bender or you can use a spinal needle kind of a thing and this is usually as i told you literature wise it is for anterior horn but uh, there is a very nice paper by dr amit joshi is from nepal and he has got a very nice paper in which he has explained repair of a posterior horn of meniscus with a outside in technique so this is this is a paper that is much read much read for all of you so in this te that technique particularly he has uh, he has uh, developed some techniques in which you can even go to the posterior most part and you can do the posterior horn repair also with the outside in devices now coming to the inside out devices inside out is actually called as a gold standard so this is what is called as a gold standard why because you can achieve the most solid repairs with inside out technique and literature wise you if you see it is usually recommended for the body of the meniscus but now there are zone specific cannulas with increased angulation so even you can use this inside out device for posterior horn and for the anterior horn as well so again it is not so you can do the whole of your case from anterior to posterior horn with the inside out device technique and for that you need to use a uh, different different angles so you have cannulas you can have a single lumen cannula or your double lumen cannula with different different angles then all inside devices now all inside devices is classically used for a posterior horn because it is considered to be safer in, in that area so it is classically used for a posterior horn but then you can use for a body also and now there are flexible shafts available so you have meniscus repair devices with flexible shaft so the two examples will be coming to that are a fast fix flex and a air plus so both of them are flexible shaft so you can use it for anterior horn also so again all inside device also you can use for it in it that's it now the fourth new addition that we have done is the menisco tibial repair device and we will be focusing more in this talk on this particular device uh, and uh, the importance of this device now what happens is whenever you do repair either this this or this uh, you actually increase the extrusion of the meniscus Why? So because you're pulling the exactly. So you're pulling the, the, pulling the meniscus out and tying it out. So whatever you are using, all these three techniques, they will actually effectively increase the extrusion of the meniscus. 
So if the meniscus already has an extrusion, if you do these techniques, that the meniscus will you can you will be able to repair the meniscus, but overall the extrusion will in the end it will it is going to increase. So just explaining a case, so you can see that this is a complex medial meniscus tear posterior horn and we have done a pari crusting and you can see that there is a bad tear on the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. So you can see that there is a tear with a flap on the posterior aspect of the knee. So what we need to do is we need to put an anchor there. This is called as an extrusion repair anchor. This is an X fix anchor. And with this anchor, what we can do is we can pass, take bites into the flap of the meniscus, both anterior and the posterior aspect, and then we can start closing the flap. So these kind of a flap, bad flaps, previously it was recommended that you just trim off this flap and then do the repair in the end. But with this technique, what you can do is actually you can repair this flap. So what I am doing is we have used the first pass, we need to pass the posterior stitches and then with the uh, suture shuttling device we are passing the anterior one. So like one anchor we have passed and two, not, two sutures we are taking posteriorly and two sutures we are taking anteriorly and then we will be doing the side to side closure. So what we will do is we will be closing these sutures one by one. So this is the first suture we have closed. And you can see that with the first suture, it is almost started coming into the place. So because the, it has a base inside on the on the meniscus on the tibial junction, the, you can actually close the meniscus very nicely. So the, this was a bad flap, but once you are once you are started starting to tie these knots, it is actually coming into a very proper place. So this flap which was inverted on the back is now on its place, and you are able to achieve it and you can supplement it with all inside sutures in the end. So you, this is the air device, this is the air device and you close it with the air device in the end. So with these three sutures, this you can see that you have achieved a very nice repair with three, uh, three knots. So one air and then in the end you do a small microfracture to increase the healing in this sort of a complex meniscus tears. Another patient. So you can see that again, it's a radial tear in the posterior horn. You can see that the posterior part is flipped. So when I pull it, this is the posterior part. So now this is a radial tear. Now this radial tear is equivalent to a total meniscus because the meniscus will not function because of the hoop stress. Now you have a gap here and here we are using a root fix anchor. So root fix anchor will be actually uh, uh, inserted at the base of that uh, lesion. And from that base, again, uh, this is a retrograde insertion, uh, 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 instead of the anterograde insertion initially, this is a retrograde anchor, so we pull it and when we fix it, there are four sutures which are going, four suture limbs which are going in, in different directions and then we tie one suture on each of the sides. So this is my first suture and when I pull it, I could able to reduce the flipped fragment, so this is very common, the posterior fra fragment is flipped on the back. So when you pull it, it will serve as a correction suture also and it, it can, so we have passed all the four sutures. So classically as I told you, two on the back and two on the front and then if you close side by side, it is like a margin convergence you do in the shoulder and you can achieve a very good reduction and very good repair here. So this is a very nice repair that we have obtained here. This is the first suture and with the second suture, we are very good in your, our repair. So the radial tear which was very bad torn is now repaired nicely with this technique. So this is a, this is not a root tear, but this is a radial tear in the posterior horn. Because root tears by definition should be within a centimeter of the attachment. So this is more than a centimeter, but this is a radial tear. And again, it was repaired by the same technique, meniscotibial fixation. So this is, as I told you, this is the fourth part of this, the, this is the, this is the, in, in the classification, we have added the meniscotibial repairs. Now another case, so you, this is a very bad case, you can understand, very, again, again a very bad flap. So if you appreciate one thing, so you have a bad flap here, the flap is bad and if you see here on the anterior aspect, the anterior flap is everted outside. So what we do here is we correct the eversion of the anterior flap, again we use the X-fix anchor, it is an anterograde. Meniscotibial anchor, 
you put the sutures uh, like there and you start passing your sutures again posterior and anterior both the sides both the sides of the flap you need want to cover with that one by one you need to cover it and then this is again this is the anterior part then you go for the posterior part so two two anchors two sutures on the anterior part two sutures will go on the posterior part here if you can see there is a lot of inflammation here this is a sign of menisco tibial injury so and this is a sign of extrusion also so increase inflammation in this area is a sign of menisco tibial extrusion and then we pass sutures sequentially So we have passed it from the back again. Two sutures on the back, two sutures on the front, and then we tied it again, just like that. So when we close it, the meniscus will sit on very nicely to its place. So two two sutures, one blue one and then one white one, and the bad meniscus flap which was there has come up into its position very nicely. Okay. so this is about menisco tibial fixation so three all these three cases are different different types but this i can definitely tell you that menisco tibial fixation is now a new entrance into the menisco tibial meniscus repair segment and it is very helpful in complex cases in which your standard meniscus repair don't work specifically if there is extrusion now we will talk about the other fixation here so meniscus repair that is the all inside technique if you talk about so all inside techniques the prototype is basically the fast fix device from smith and nephew it was a standard device it has a passive deployment mode now they advanced the generation to fast fix 360 degree which is a active deployment device and then there is a fast fix flex so fast fix flex basically is a you can change the curvature so you can use for anterior one posterior one whatever you want and you it comes with a bender so you can bend it and you can reach into the tight corners then you have a striker air device air plus device you can have the liquid linvatex sequent on this device is basically a uh, this can uh, put multiple stitches so as compared to all these devices they will put a single stitch so interrupted sutures so they are loaded with two devices sequent is loaded up to seven devices so you can put place running sutures with the sequent then you can have arthritis fiber stitch or sironic sure stitch these are all the variants of all inside meniscus repair devices now they are good for peripheral tears and menisco capsular separations now if i talk about the all inside repairs you can have a straight curve reverse curve now my personal preference is to put sutures in two is to one configuration so normally if you see the meniscus is like this and i usually pass, like to pass two by one configuration so two sutures up with a ratio of one, one suture down so if you want to put three sutures we put two on the top layer and one on the bottom layer like this if you want to put six sutures you put four up two down So this is what if you have to put multiple sutures and there is a large bucket tender, it is better. If the tear is very bad, you can put one circumferential suture like that. But what it does is it it blunts this, uh, it blunts the edge. So that is why we don't recommend it on a routine basis. Now, sequent as I told you, it can produce serial stitches. It has multiple implants and single device. It it uh, puts us running locking stitches. Now, fast fix 360 degree, as I told you, is a made up of two zero sutures, UHMWP. It has an adjustable depth gauge. You can use a half pipe, and you have two options uh, options of reverse curve, curve and straight. You use a curved one for upper uh, upper border. For the inferior margin, as I told you, better to use a reverse, and for the lateral meniscus, it is better to use a straight. Flex, as I told you, you can bend it, so you can uh, you can achieve at up to 80 plus 10. so around 90 degree of bending is possible so you can reach a tight corners with using this flexible devices now there is another device which is called as a lower stitch pro now this device is basically like a knee scorpion but it it can fire two sutures at a time so it can just like that radial tear it can uh, close the radial tear side by side so one here one here and then you can close on the top so it has a jaw and it the jaw can be fired twice so when you make one suture one suture and then you can tie So this is one example of novel stitch pro for the. No, this is all inside also. 
So you can see that there is a bucket handle sort of a tear. It's sort of a double bucket handle there. You can see bucket handle tear. And we'll be just doing a very jiggle debridement. You don't have to do a very generous debridement here. And once your debridement is done, you start putting your sutures with a specific zone, specific cannula. This is the inside out technique. So with the inside out technique, you pass sutures up and down and then you go, you make a posterior safety incision, uh, retract all the structures posteriorly and then you pass sutures one by one through this pattern. So this is the uppermost, then you can put down, up, down, up, down, up, like that you can put. And as I told you, I usually like to put it in 2 is to 1 ratio, like 4 up, 2 down, 6 up, 3 down, like that. So with this we are putting sutures up and down. Okay, so multiple sutures are now passed one by one. So you can see it's the circumferential thing. If it's a complete bucket handle, occasionally I put eight to ten sutures, sometimes more also. So this is the final. If you see, this is the final picture. This is the final picture. You can see a number of sutures on the top and on the bottom, and the whole of the meniscus is repaired into its place. can see that the bad tear which was there was now very nicely reduced. But the important thing as I told you this will push it under side. So it will relatively it will increase a little bit of extrusion. But these bucket handle tears you actually want to reduce them to their to capsule. So I think that is it. The rest one is more theoretical. But this is what I want to emphasize in recent advances of meniscus tear. Thank you.